Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'll just monitor on Facebook. So we are we are live now. People can see us. Yes. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we're here on Facebook. We're waiting for a few minutes. I'm here with uh, Monsieur Francois Marie Patoni. And we will uh, start when uh, the folks from YouTube uh, uh, come online. Thank you for your patience. We have 16 uh, people on right now, Ben. Okay. And, uh, uh, welcome, we folks. Uh, yeah. we, are, we are waiting for the uh, other broadcast to complete, and they will be on momentarily. And when the, they join us, we will start the Q&A. I'll chime in here, Ben. Um, I don't know if you see the chat there to the right, but Catherine Friday has uh, posted a message uh, thanking you, Francois Marie, for uh, the informative presentation. Uh, she's been here for 25 years. And she learned a lot, too. So what should I do? I see go ahead and start from on the on the chat. We'll just stand by. For, okay. Till, uh, Chris gives us the nod to start. Yeah, I think you're good to go. Now Kathleen is yes. your Kathleen, right? Uh, no. Yeah, we're we're looking at it from from Streamyard. I don't see the. Um, yeah. So yeah, th those those chats. Uh, Joanne Fisher has uh, made a comment. I don't know if you can see that, uh, Francois Marie. Yeah, I, I see, see the, the Franco file. Yeah. No, I see and the comment. I am on private chat. I'll go to. Um, Comments. Uh, go to comments. Ah, comments. There we are. Hey. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Thanks. <clears throat> We've got a minute and a half before. Uh... I don't know why that's on. So Chris, are we live on Bo uh, on Facebook at this point? Yes, we are live. All right. Oh, there is there. We have our first question that just came in, Francois Marie. Okay. Uh, all right. Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for finding us here on Facebook. I appreciate that. Um, this is Ben Woodbury again, and I'm here with uh, our presenter for today, uh, Monsieur Patoni. And uh, we will be happy to to take your uh, your questions uh, at this at this time. And uh, Chris, we have a question. Yes. Uh, yes, we do. Um, this question is from Kat Romero. Um, she thanks you, Francois Marie, for the excellent talk. Uh, says apologies if this was covered at the beginning. But do you know anything about the life of Francois Jean Rocher, Rochat, a member of a brotherhood of French woodworkers, and said by some to have built the staircase in the Loretto Chapel? He was murdered in his cabin in Don Canyon. Yes, but you have to give me another hour online. 
uh, <laughs> I, I have a, a couple of pages in my book. Yes, uh, uh, there is a lot about uh, written about it, a lot of research, some is controversial. Uh, but indeed, he is probably the person who built the famous so-called miraculous staircase on the Loreto Chapel. But uh, there, is, there are some people who dispute it. There is not absolute proof, but it's very likely, yes. And he was murdered in Dock Canyon it, uh, about because of disputes on land and water rights. And there is a whole report, I think, by the National Park Service about the cabin. They found the cabin, the ruins, and the stuff he was selling to Native Americans. A lot of history, but Catherine can uh, get in touch with me directly, and I'll share whatever I have. Right. And, and Francois, your your email is uh, is on your web page, isn't that correct? It's on the web page, yes. Yeah, FrenchInNewMexico.com. Yes. And uh, can you see the next question? Catherine Friday asks, uh, what is the French population in New Mexico today? Yeah, it's about, it's not really known because there are many French people who don't register to the French consulate. There are about 340 people res registered to, to, to vote in the French elections, but the consul thinks there are about a thousand in total. We don't know the exact number, so it could be up to a thousand, but not much more. And uh, there's a question from Ron Garcia. Which fur trapper uh, Ledoux brothers settled in the Mora era, area? There's a village there named the Yeah, they were the two brothers. Um, well, yeah, I know about descendants of the Ledoux. Actually, in my talk, I mentioned the family reunion. Uh, they, they, they get together. I don't know if they did it this year. They get together in a picnic in July. And I was a few years ago invited. It was at uh, in the little lake near Las Vegas. And there were about 100 people. And I can, if you write to me, I can give you the main uh, Ledoux contact who is in touch with practically everybody in the family. I have a couple in my Facebook friends list too, but there are lots of them, lots of them, at least 100 uh, cousins of yours. And uh, Rachel Allard uh, Gowen, Gowen is joining us on the phone, she says. Um, uh, I do not know where Jean-Baptiste Dallary came from. Uh, he was called the Frenchman, and while everyone yeah. believes he came from France, I have to. Was... Oh. Yeah, I have to check it out. It's difficult to remember offhand, but but he's very well. He's well known. He was called Jean-Baptiste Dallet, and he came from. I could look in my book, but, but get in touch with me or, or, or look in the book. But yeah. He, his life is pretty well documented. Yes. Uh, let's see. I read. I read the question. The UNM say his brother signed property over to a sister in Quebec. I don't know. It's possible. But yeah, he came from France. Yes. Yes. Uh, and you see the question there from Lori Tabino. Um, thank you for doing the presentation. If you've found anything, have you found anything new about Pierre L'Espérance? About, I, I cannot hear you well. Which question is, is it on the, oh. on the it's question? It's a question from Lori Tavino. Lori oh, Tavino is at the bottom. At the bottom. Oh, Lori, okay. Yes, I do. I don't know it by heart, but I think there is a whole book. Uh, and I can send you the contacts of the descendants. I, I am in touch with a few descendants of L'Espérance family. So I can uh, I can put you in touch. Actually, some of my most exciting experiences were to reunite families. I had last year an email from two uh, women in their late 80s 
and they said, thank you so much. I found my cousin. Uh, I did not know her. And then they met each other. They did not know each other, but they met through my website when they researched for their ancestors. So if you write to me, I'll give you all what I have on, on L'Esperance. Yes. And there's another question that just came in below that from Kat Romero. It's yeah, about the like Labadi family. Ah, did the family speak French with each other? I was not there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. I spoke. I suspect they would speak Spanish, but I don't really know. It's a long time ago. Let me look. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, Ron Ron Garcia wrote about the Ledoux and, and Mora. There is a lot going on in Mora at the moment because the old mill, the flour mill built by Seren Sandvrin is uh, being renovated and, uh, and you can find it on the internet or whatever. It's a beautiful stone building which was starting to fall in disrepair and it's, it's in Mora by, just by the river and uh, is being totally renovated. So it's a great place to, to go and look at. Nick, uh, Ben, if you have some questions. Yeah, can, uh, well, we'll just wait and see if, uh, there, if there are any other questions out there and we'll address those momentarily. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Francois Marie, you and I had been talking a bit beforehand and I was curious to know um, who, who your, uh, if you might comment on the French women uh, who were uh, early settlers or early contributors uh, to the history of New Mexico, and perhaps you have have a good have a nice story relating to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you know, there were very few women uh, because most of these explorers or settlers were young men and we would marry locally with, with, with Hispanic women or Native American. Uh, so we don't have many, many French women. Well, one I like very much, but it's a kind of a joke is Mary Lambert. She was married to a Frenchman and she's the ghost, which is supposed to appear in the, <laughs> in right. the St. James Hotel, but I could not meet her on that night. Uh, but I would like to say a word for the nuns, you know, the, the, the religious nuns who work tirelessly. And I try to have in my book to have more about them, all these women, you know, the Loreto nuns and all that, who were really helping people. But in those days, women were not really recognized. So they go nameless through history. So we know the famous one, you know, like the niece of Bishop Lemmy, who became the, the Mother Teresa, but um, but these other nuns, I would like to pay tribute to them because they were very dedicated, very hardworking. Uh, but we don't know their names. I, I met the descendants of one of them. She was nicknamed the well. She was not a, name, a nun, so it's wrong. But it's, she was a little teacher on horseback. She would travel for like hundred miles uh, in the. Socorro area to teach uh, to the Native Americans and they would uh, actually protect her during her trip on, on a mule to, to the other village. So I, I don't have any French women to name, but, but I would pay tribute to the nuns who have fallen into oblivion. Thank you very much. Well, I, we're approaching the end of our time here for the Q&A. Uh, Francois Marie, do you have any closing remarks you'd like to make? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, sorry. Just there, uh, just a couple more questions have come in real quick. Oh, okay. Um, so Ron Garcia was asking which of the Ledoux brothers settled in Mora. Was it was it what, a particular one or all of them? Uh, I, I, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember which Ledoux, uh, or if it's one or both, but there's so many Ledoux, uh, at least in um, in Taos. Uh, I could find out, 
but it, I can connect you to the Ledoux family and, and you get to know them all practically. So in part, I would like to say, go to my website, the frenchinnewmexico.com, and there you can have more about these stories, but you, you can get in touch with me. I have a lot of information given to me by descendants and others on the families. And if I have something, I'll just email it to you. I just copy my notes and send them to you. Uh, and connect you also, I can connect you to the descendants I have been in touch with, and there are about 300 of them. Um, there's a question from um, about Etienne de Gorge. Um, Amy Anderson is saying that uh, Etienne was her great great grandfather, and is de Gorge Street in Taos named after him? Do you know? Yeah, he was. The, I think he was the mayor of Taos. Uh, so, what what was the question? Oh, yeah. If if um, if the street is named for him and why? But if he was the mayor, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was named because uh, because he was a well known and respected person. Yeah. Um, so, Francois, know, Marie, um, there, there are a few comments from people uh, on the chat room, which you'll be able to see. Yes, um, all very beneficial. Uh, but I think we should end with the with the la with the question by Karen Crumbless. Uh, she mentioned we saw a beautiful small French Gothic church standing alone in La Cueva. And yes, she was wondering if you knew any of the history on that. Is it? Uh... There are so many, I would have to see the picture or, or check exactly because uh, there have been whole books written on the, the small churches in New Mexico. Uh, I have to look it up. And the priests, the Catholic priests were very busy building churches, building schools and renovating churches. So it's probably one of those. Actually, they would renovate churches by putting steeples on them, you know, little hats in, in the European style. And these, you know, it looked that good, actually. But these were later removed to be more uh, style defeating New Mexico. So I have to, if Karen, if you can write to me uh, things, I can, I can look it up. Yes. So, Francois Marie, I want to thank you on behalf of the New Mexico History Museum, the Friends of History, and all those who were able to participate with us live today. Um, it's been most informative, and uh, clearly uh, there there remains considerable interest in in the French here, in as as a consequence, uh, French in New Mexico, and in the and then in their gene genealogies. So, I do want to thank you on that. Uh, I want to remind people once more that. Uh, if you wish to be in contact uh, with our speaker, you can uh, go on the web page at uh, frenchinnewmexico.com, and there's additional information there. There's an opportunity to purchase his book if you wish, and uh, also uh, his email is there in terms of any follow-on questions which you might ha might might have. Um, Finally, I wanted to mention briefly uh, to, to you all that next month uh, on um, October 7th, uh, uh, Richard, Dr. Richard Meltzer, uh, Emeritus Professor of History from UNM at Valencia, um, will be speaking on Ernie Pyle, same time, same place. And uh, we look forward to your participation at that time. Please share with friends uh, and acquaintances as you see fit. Uh, again, thank you to all. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Kathleen, for helping us behind the scenes. Uh, it's been a most informative and enjoyable day. Thank you, Ben, and thank you, everybody, for coming here today. Thank you, Ben, and everybody. Uh, have a good day. <laughs>